Yo, what up guys? Welcome to another episode of Fan Fridays, a series where we showcase off one of your guys' decks. So today we are checking out a Jeskai Burn deck sent to us by Loic David. So thank you very much, David, for your deck submission. And if you'd like to submit a deck of your own as well, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or emailing me, or jamming me on social media, wherever I can see your comment, and you might just see your deck played on a future episode of Fan Fridays. And keep in mind, if you wanted to pick up today's deck and also support the channel, you can get the deck from tcgplayer.com by clicking the deckless link down below and as always before we get started thank you very much to all my patrons y'all are the reason this channel gets to keep on going and if you'd like to support the channel as well patreon is the best place to do so and with that let's get right into the deck tech hope you enjoy This video is sponsored by MTGOnlineStore.com. For the latest and greatest of MTG apparel and accessories, everything from t-shirts to backpacks, head on over to MTGOnlineStore.com and use promo code MARIN for 15% off your next order, and it also supports the show. Link is down below. I know what some of you are thinking. Yes, we did just play Ralstorm Conduit on the channel not too long ago. It was about a couple weeks ago, but we're bringing him back because this deck submitted by Loic David was just too fun to pass up. It is a Jeskai aggro deck and is based around burning your opponent with Ral. So let's take another look at it and see if we can do better with Ral this time. Starting off with our creatures, we got Monastery, Swift Spear, and Storm Chaser Mage. These dudes both have prowess, and we're going to be casting a lot of spells in this deck, especially with Ral copying up our spells. We're just going to get a lot of prowess triggers. The last creature we have is Snapcaster Mage to flash back those spells as well, so we can double up on things like Bolt. And onto our Planeswalkers, Ral Storm Conduit, as we just mentioned a million times. So 4 mana, starts at 4, goes up to 6, so his beef alone makes him really difficult to kill. He scries for you, but most importantly, whenever you cast a spell or copy a spell, he deals 1 damage to the opponent, and his minus 2 allows you to copy an instant sorcery spell. So copying up a burn spell is really massive with Ral. Copying up a bolt lets you deal 8 damage to your opponent's face, allows you to kill a lot more creatures with a bolt than you otherwise would have. And then we have a Jason the Mind Sculptor, you know, just good tech, gives you everything you could want in one little package. So just got that guy in there for value. And onto our first set of burn spells, we got Lightning Bolt, can't go wrong with it, and Lightning Helix as well, because we are in Jeskai, we have access to Lightning Helix, so why not play it? Bold creature, gain 3 life, and then we have Boros Charm. Now Boros Charm is a really, really, really sweet one with Ral. Copying this up with Ral is going to allow us to deal 10 damage to the opponent, and then imagine snap casting that back afterwards. That is 15 to the dome. And prowessing up our Storm Chasing Mage and getting it in the air as well, that's just so much aggro, and hopefully this deck works out like this because that would be awesome. And onto our cantrips, we got to play a set of opts, nice and instant speed. Then we also got Electrolyze, which is also a burn spell as well. This is a pretty neat one to copy with Ral. Draw two cards, scatter four damage as you choose. That's there just for the tech as well. And onto our last few spells that didn't fit in any particularly category, Path the Exile is there, just as hard removal for fatties so that we can get in with our little prowess guys. And then we got some Mutagenic Growths. Now Mutagenic Growth we can cast for free by paying 2 life, and this gives our prowess guys plus 3 plus 3 really good for just getting there. We got a total of 20 lands, which should be fine because we don't really have that high of a curve aside from our Rowls, but we do have Ops and Electrolyzes to help draw the lands if we are struggling. So onto the sideboard, we got a couple copies of Dispel to interact with opposing control decks and burn. Got a couple copies of Surgical Extraction to disrupt combos out of the graveyard, as well as Rest in Pieces to disrupt graveyards. A couple copies of Geistasane Trapped against the Hyper Interactive decks because once they can't remove this and they have no access to Wrath Effects, Geist is a good one to bring in because he can close the game out really fast. Set of the Wreckage is good against the Go Wide decks that are trying to out-aggro us, things like Merfolk and Humans. Got a couple copies of Shatterstorm to blow up all the artifacts, just in case we're going up against Affinity or Were. A couple copies of Wear and Tear as versatility to be able to hit artifacts and or enchantments. And then one more copy of Electrolyze, just in case it has targets that it can kill very easily in the deck we're going up against. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started, and I'll see you in the first round. Got a game here with uh, Jeskai Burn against Father Grip 1. And that is a keepable hand. Yeah, what's up, Phil? How you doing today? Search for tomorrow. Okay, I have not played against Valakut in a while. It has been a minute. People just stop playing this deck. Alright, so let's go Steam Men's Shocked and Pass. I don't know why I wouldn't just play Scalding Tarn and Fetch for an island, but I'm skeptical of my mana base. 
So let's opt Helix to the bottom. We drew a Helix anyways. Thanks, Moto. Um, shock again. Make them think we have a mana leak or something. There's a lot of scape shift with the new Karn in the meta now. Oh, you mean, uh, since they ramp so heavily, they play Karn Lattice and scape shift, or is it just because it's good against Karn Lattice? I'm not sure. Search for Tom resolves. What did foot? Yep. Alright, let's go. Helix your face. Gain some life back. Alright, Scalding Tarn, go. We'll just go opt Helix, and then we can resolve a Rao. And then if we draw a Boros Charm, we can dome them for quite a bit. There's a Valakut. Alright, so let's fetch, grab an island, let's opt, swift spear to the bottom, we're looking for a boros charm, white, red, helix you, mountain, Rao. okay Rao. I'm gonna need you to scry me into a boros charm, please and thank you, come on, that's a helix, well helix do it, Okay, we can Helix, Helix, Snap. Wait, we can Helix, Snap. Okay, so Ral can copy a Helix, right? Ral can copy a Helix. With the Swiss Spear out, that's lethal, unless they have a blocker. You know, I'm gonna keep that. Wait, do I keep this? Do I keep this? Uh, I'm gonna keep it. Because if I go Swift Spear, Mutagenic Growth... Helix, Helix off Rao, that's a lot of damage. That is literally, like, a lot over lethal. Just, they have a Titan for sure. They always have it. They always do. So they for sure have the Titan here. Now, they, they don't get to attack with it. We get to kill Titan. Let's see if they get any triggers. They are going to get two Mountains. They're not going to get more Valakuts, so at least there's that. Wait, we can snap mutagenic growth. All right, we might actually have it here. We might actually have it. Yeah, we, we might have this. We might have this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Here we go. So, Scalding Tarn. Let's make sure we don't fetch the wrong mana here. So let's just get a Sacred Foundry to be safe. And shock it. Start on a Swift Spear. Now, Ral is going to copy up a Lightning Helix to kill Primetime, and they're going to go to 10. And then I'm going to Mutagenic Growth, snap Mutagenic Growth. And that should be lethal. So yeah, minus Ral. Let's go white, red. Lightning Helix, Titan. Ral's going to deal damage to them, deal damage to them. And it's going to copy Helix to shoot the Titan as well. Same targets. Don't screw up on me, Moto. Don't screw up on me. And kill Titan. Mutagenic Growth on Swift Spear. Paying two life. Deal a damage to them. Get Prowess. Snapcaster. Mutagenic Growth. Oh, please tell me. Oh, that's Xaxes! That's Xaxes! We got there! Oh, the nut. Oh, the nut. Jeskai burn, yo. Jeskai burn. Xaxes eight damage with the Swift Spear. Oh, man. What a close game. What a close game. Xaxes. Oh, man. <laughs> On to sideboarding against Scapeshift. I think we want... What do we want? Uh, I don't think I want anything. I think I leave it the same. Yeah, I'm leaving it the same. I knew it. I knew we had it there. It was just... Okay. That was sick. Good. Okay, we thought it out and we got there. Alright. I'm gonna keep this hand. 
but they're we're on the draw, so they got a chance to ramp a lot faster than they did previously. <laughs> Sp suspends the search for Tom. Give me a swift spear. That is not a swift spear. It's also important that we stay above 18 life because we gotta survive a scape shift for six. Colnihar Expedition. Alright, path is fine. Let's grab a mountain. Storm Chaser Mage. Get him for one. Thanks for the nuts, guys. Search for Tom is coming off suspend. Takes up their colony heart. So they're gonna be play they're gonna be able to play a Titan next turn. It's for two, right? Yeah. So when it has two counters, three counters. Alright, so they need to find one more land here. They hard cast a search for Tom, and now they can crack the colony heart. Sakura tribe. Alright, let's go to combat. And I think I'm just going to let this go. I kind of want to just save the path for a, a Titan this turn. Because I feel like they're going to have a Titan. They always have it. When do they not have it? They always have the Titan. Alright, I'm going to path the Titan now. Get our lucky planes. Rigged. I mean, they do have packed, uh, packed of, what do you call it? Summoners packed. And also four titans, so they have a good chance of finding one. Alright, they are killing Storm Chaser McGee. Okay, there's Snap Path, and also Electrolyze is up, so... Yeah, let's just go Steven's tapped and pass. If we don't have to snap path, then we'll just electrolyze. They're getting pretty low. 13 is, uh... That's in range of, uh, of Ral copying Boros Charm. Stop drawing mountains, dude. Stop drawing la- oh, They have the second Titan! Come on! They always have multiples! Why do they always have multiples? It's it's so rigged. It's so rigged. It's super rigged. All right, so any more land search here and we're dead. We got to find Helix. Gain some life. And of course, they had explore. Okay, thank goodness it was a forest. Okay, they're empty-handed. This is our chance. This is our chance. So, we can go with... Island. And let's electrolyze you. Draw a card. Oh, there's a helix. Alright, go to combat. Attack for two. Don't find a mountain or any land searching here. Don't do it. Just find a colony heart. Find a prismatic omen. Don't find a No! No! They found a mountain! That's so lame! We had it next turn! We had it next turn! Ah, uh, That was ours! That was ours! We had it! If they just whiffed on a mountain there! Ah, uh, That sucks! Okay, let's just submit it right back. Nothing I really need here. Okay, on to game two. We are on the play. Oh, this is game three. Swift Spear into Opt with Double Path. Double Path is not the best. I kind of only want one path, but I'm counting on this Opt to find us something good. I'm keeping it, though, because of the turn one Swifty. So start on Stomvance. Get out Swift. Get in for one. I would like a Storm Chaser McGee off the top. That'd be pretty good. 
Oh man, that was my one aggression. Snapcaster. All right, I'm gonna opt. Electrolyze, sure, I'll keep Electrolyze. Call me heart. All right, let's fetch, get a sacred foundry. There's another electrolyze. All right, that's a lot of electrolyzes. Kind of want a hollowed fountain here. Explore, yep. I need to find a helix to get above six. Mound to the bottom, snapcaster. Oh, there's a helix, that's what I asked for. Get in for two. Pay for pack, but it doesn't matter because I got infinite mana. Okay, they get a mountain, but we go to one. Waiting for them to put their triggers on the stack. Alright, so we go to one. Get to flash and a snap. Okay. Opponent, I'm gonna need you to whiff on a land. No! They got the land. Oh, opponent's rigging their deck. This ain't fair. Alright, but we got close. Man, opponent just keeps barely getting there the turn we're about to win. Let's just move on. Got a game here with Jeskai Burn against CPA, and we are on the draw, and I'm going to keep this hand, because that is double Swift Spear with Mutagenic and some Boros Charms Helixes. Seems pretty good. We're basically Red White Burn right now. Don't have any blue spells quite yet. Start on Sacred Foundry, and start on Monastery Swift Spear. I'm not going to Mutagenic Growth it until I know for sure they don't have removal spells, um, because, you know, reasons. Okay, Sacred Foundry of their own off of Marsh Flats. That could probably mean um, Mardu Pyro. Dogless Shrine. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go second Swift Spear. Go to combat and see if we can potentially Mutagenic Growth. I, I want to go for it. I want to go for the Mutagenic here. I feel like they definitely have a path, but we're trying it. If we get blown out, then oh well. Oh, it worked. Okay, so now we have access to Boros Charm and Helix, and they're at 12, so they're getting pretty low. Oh, price you mean? Do you think Canopy Printings will plummet Horizon Canopy? No, no, Horizon Canopy is still expensive. Like, it's, it's very limited. And there is definitely decks that want it, but you know what? If we get a blue-white Canopy, which we will, uh, humans will probably play that. So, oh, what's going on here? O-ring? Is it just, is it just Mardu Nahiri? It might be Mardu Nahiri. Oh, a second Swift Spear. Okay, so there is one thing that I changed about this deck that the, uh, the deck creator had that I did not agree with. He had two planes two basic planes. I did not agree with that whatsoever, so I replaced it with another Arid Mesa. So just so you know, Loic David, that is what I did to your deck before uh, starting up these games. Because, um, yeah, two planes, I think, is too much. I think you only need one. Wog. Okay, well, they're going to be down to one here. Let's see if we top a burn spell, and we do not. Okay, well, let's hope they can't gain life. Um, but yeah, I feel like the the new the new canopy lands 
I know they're printed on demand, so there, there's going to be a lot of printings. So they might start off like $30 at first, but they'll definitely eventually stop printing um, Modern Horizons. And they're going to go up to like, um, you know, uh, what, what do you call it? What do you call the price that I'm talking about? $70. They're going to be as expensive as Horizon Canopy. Ooh, we topped the bolt. Always top deck bolt for the win. That's always how burn works. You always top deck the bolt for the win. So yeah, I know they're going to be printed on demand. So they're going to start off like $20, $30 at first, but they're definitely going to go up. So pick up your play sets of every single one if you possibly can. It'll cost you like two or $300, um, but it is worth it because it'll be an investment for the long run because those things are not going to be $20, $30 for a long time. They're going to definitely match up. Horizon Canopy has three printings and it's still like $70. So those are definitely going to be meet it up there. For sure, they, those new ones will only have one printing, so way more limited than Horizon Canopy. So against uh, Martyr Demonic Pact, I think I want Wear and Tear to be able to destroy Demonic Pact because that getting them four life is annoying. So definitely bringing that in. They have Wogs, so no point in bringing in Geist. I think Electrolyze is the thing that we just cut. I think that's always a cuttable card. And just run it back like that. You're hoping Horizon Canopy will drop because you need them. They're so expensive. Oh, yeah. Like, it took me a while to get my play set, but I was picky. I wanted the Future Sight ones. I waited and waited and waited. They're so hard to come by, but I got them. Um, but it's, you know, dude, it's it's great when you get them. It's, it's totally worth it. Might as well just save up money for them because I don't think they're going to be going down. I mean, if anything, if they do drop, it'll be like $10 because people are still going to want them for the decks that they have. Like... And they also have that really pretty, that really pretty printing. Shambling vents annoying, so I'm gonna have to save a kill spell for that. All right, let's get a steam vents. Shocked. Bolt you. Oh no! They have the canopy. Uh-oh. Well, we're going to need to draw wear and tear. Well, they know we have a bolt. What are we going to do now? We're going to have to Boros Charm for double strike. Marin has quickly become an educational channel for how Twitch Prime works. LOL. Yeah, we can do that again. Draw Kovo with the advertisement. Yo, if you have Amazon Prime out there, and you, if you did not know this, if you have Amazon Prime, then that means you automatically have Twitch Prime and you can subscribe to any Twitch streamer for free once a month. So you have one waiting in the bank right there. And I would recommend using it. If not on me, then use it on your favorite streamer because there's definitely deserving streamers out there who deserve that subscription. You get it for free if you have Amazon Prime. It's, it's there. You have Twitch Prime. So there's millions of unused Twitch Prime subscriptions out there that are just sitting there on the table that that your favorite streamer could use. Ghostly Prison. All right, we're definitely not winning this one. But once we draw a wear and tear, we'll be solid. So I'm going to keep on playing on. I'm not conceding yet. Once we draw the uh once we draw the wear and tear, we're going to town with these burn spells. But if they play demonic pact here, we are likely to lose. Oh, Phyrexian on life. Oh, they're definitely a Solemnity deck. Oh, that's the reason that they have O-Ring in their deck. That is definitely the reason they have O-Ring. They have it because they're... Not only can it remove stuff, but also it uh, stops their Demonic Pack from killing themselves. You were not active on Twitch for a while, so you had probably 20-some-odds months of subs that went down the drain. Yeah, those could have been used on a streamer that would have really appreciated it. That's why be wary that if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime. All right. Rune Halo and Monastery of Spear. Come on, wear and tear. Come on, wear and tear. I don't have double blue for Snap Opt. That's a shame. Well, I think I'm going to... 
I could, yeah, I could just snap now so I don't have to discard a card. I want to save my cards because once I draw the wear and tear, like I want, I want to use all these. <sighs> once I have a uh, demonic pact, though, ideally tutor for. Is it Solemnity? They get Ghostly Prison. Okay. Okay, cool. There we go. There's a blue source. So let's get an island. And play Jace. Start brainstorming. Put back Snapcaster and Swift Spear. Ghostly Prison, yep. Alright, Brainstorm. Put back Swift Spear and Island. Play a Flooded Strand and crack it to shuffle away those things. Grab a Hollow Fountain tapped. Do I have 8 cards in hand? I do have 8 cards in hand, so I'm going to Snap Opt. Let's Opt. Come on, Wear and Tear. Please. Storm Tracer Mage to the bottom. All right, end turn. Discard planes. Come on, Jace. I need you to do work, Jace. Oh, they have the demonic pact. No. No. Okay, they're definitely gonna harmless offering us. They be shocking. Oh, I could have been taking up Jace to try to get to Fates, uh, try to get to the ult. Okay, but we're likely gonna die soon. Jace, please. Okay, I want that opt. Put back Swift Spear and Swift Spear. Um, let's opt and put a Swift Spear to the bottom. Draw another Swift Spear. Play this tab, go to combat, attack with the snaps. Attack with one snap. Pay four. Discard a swift spear. Okay, what are they doing? Oh, they're gonna deal four damage to Jace! No! Okay, they're gonna draw two cards. Okay, I'm gonna have to wear and tear that demonic pack before I wear and tear... Ley line because that thing's about to kill us. They for sure have harmless. They gotta have harmless offering. They gotta. Or they're just planning on O-ringing it just for value. But they have they they have sacred foundry. Very clear that they have harmless offering. Sphere of safety. Okay, I'm never attacking ever again. Jace. Okay, so deals four damage to any targets. Yeah, so they can kill Jace. Do I wanna? I'm gonna opt first. See if I can find it. There it is. There it is. Put it on top. Oh, I should have saved Snapcasters to snap these back. Okay, I can destroy target enchantment. So let's. Um... Oh wait, can I kill them now? Hold on. Can I actually kill them now? Play the mountain. If I wear... If I wear the... the oh, no, they have the unlife. They have the unlife. They have the unlife. Uh, okay, let's see. If I wear the unlife, I can go Bolt, Boros, Charm, Helix. That's not enough. I can go Bolt, Bolt, Boros, Charm, which is 10 damage. That's not enough. I think I I think I have to hit the demonic pact. I don't have to hit it yet. I don't have to hit the demonic pact yet. Okay, I definitely want to tick up Jace, right? Cuz do I want to okay. They still have two more to go. They still have two more to go. I think that's enough turns for us to find, uh... 
Oh, wait. Okay, Kenny Uwu says, Help here. Where do I have to go to subscribe here using my Amazon Prime? Uh, you can just click the panels below or do exclamation point subscribe. Uh, yeah, there's panels below for that. Or there at, there's a button at the top of your screen that literally says subscribe. It's like right next to the follow button. And then there should be an option for Twitch Prime. I don't have Twitch Prime, so I don't know. But it's it's there somewhere. It's the most common uh, way of people subscribing, so um, it should be easy to figure out. Um, or you can Google it. All right, I think I have to tear the ley line. Now let's uh, fate seal ourselves to get get us out of range. Oh, there's a snapcaster. I want that. I want that. Okay, pass the turn. All right, we're about to get them to essentially zero here, and then we're gonna snap where and attack. That's that's the plan. They have to gain four life here. Yeah, they're dealing four to us. Yeah, that's what they're doing. They had to gain life because they know we have a million burn spells. We're going to go Helix Bolt Boros Charm here. Oh yeah, you have to link your Amazon account to Twitch and then you can just hit the subscribe button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Unsafe Space is right. Ooh, they're giving us the option to kill all their enchantments. Okay, let's see what they attack with. Let's see who they attack with their enchantments. All at us. Okay, so we're definitely going to bolt Phyrexian Unlife. Let's go white, red, helix, a ghostly prison. And we can just chump block sphere safety. Oh, but I want to get rid of that that dang uh that that rune halo also. So white red helix the ghostly prison. Wait, why do they all turn not into enchantments? Wait, why do they Oh, wait, what? As long as you control five or more. All right. Can we get lethal here? So, bolt the opponent. White, red. Boros charm the opponent. And... Snapcaster. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have to get rid of that sphere of safety. Alright, so snap where? Uh, let's cast where. Wait, why can't I cast where? Why can't I cast where? I just snap I literally just snapped it back. What is stopping me from casting where? What happened? Hello? Why that happen? All right, I guess I have to wear the um demonic pack now. That was weird. <laughs> there we go. Kenny Uwu with the t Prime subscription. You figured it out. Yo, that's super nice of you, Kenny. I appreciate I appreciate you going through that too, sub. We are now six, I think we're six sub points away from getting the ducky. From getting the duck emote. We're like six away. Yo, Rex Sermon, thanks for the follow. How you doing? 
So welcome to the marination, Kenny Uwu, and enjoy the moons and the balls and the carns. I appreciate it. Oh, Wrath. We might have punted this game because uh, Snapcaster screwed up. They would have been dead. Yeah, they would have been dead because I would have snap weared their... I did not click through to combat. There's, I did not. So I don't understand that at all. Alright, so I get to bolt something. I'm going to bolt their unlife. Let's brainstorm with Jace. Oh, there's a Helix. That's game. White, red. Helix, you. White, red. Helix, you. There we go. Got there. Just got burn. Taking down a Mardu Demonic Pact. There was a little slip up with the uh, Snapcaster there. It did not work for some reason. It skipped through to my combat after I targeted the thing. Like, I did not click anything. I didn't click any buttons. I didn't click OK. I don't know what happened there. We almost, uh, that weird bug kind of almost screwed us over, but we pulled through and got there anyways. Just Guy Burn doing work so far. All right, let's keep this train going. Yo, what up guys? Post-production Marin here with your typical per video speed up session. Usually we speed up the longest game in the video and this was the longest game by a large margin. So we end up going against Kano Yugoro. This prompts us to speak about Mortal Kombat for a long time in the chat because he has Kano and Goro in his name which are the two main characters that I play in Mortal Kombat X which I am currently playing right now as I edit this video. So we end up getting the nut draw in that first game. Too bad I wasn't commentating over it, but we're able to play a Ral and copy up a Boros charm to dome them for 10 while attacking with their creatures at the same time, so that was pretty nuts. Going to the next game, we have the Mulligan, but we get a Storm Chaser, and we get two Storm Chasers, actually. The first one dies, um, but the second one, we go for the Mutagenic Growth on it, trying to not expect a path, because they already used the Oust, so we're not expecting a path at this point. So we end up throwing a bunch of burn spells at their face. We get so close, we're not paying any attention to the Teferi, and then they end up top decking a Nog knowledge pool, which is very fortunate for them. They got super lucky. They were about to die. So for those who don't know the Teferi knowledge pool combo, basically Teferi Timebender, the new one out of uh, War of the Spark, and also old Teferi, Mage of Zalfir, they say that your opponent cannot cast spells at sorcery speed or at instant speed. So knowledge pool, um, when it enters the battlefield, each player exiles the top three cards of the library. Whenever they cast a spell, they exile it, and they cast a spell that was exiled with knowledge pool without paying its mana cost. So what that does is make you cast a spell under knowledge pool at instant speed. And uh, Teferi says you can cast spells at instant speed, so basically you cannot cast spells. You are locked out of casting spells. It is right on level with Karn Lattice. It is super busted. Um, so we go on to the next game, and this is the reason why this was the longest game in the video, is because they started with a ley line. This is what made the game like 50 minutes long. They had a ley line in their opener, meaning that our burn spells cannot go to their face, so the burn spells end up going towards their planeswalkers. They end up getting a Baneslayer out, but fortunately we were able to copy up a Lightning Helix with Rao to kill it before it started hitting us. We thought we were going to hit them for 8 right there with our Storm Chaser Mage, because our Storm Chaser Mage is prowessed up to 8, but then they had a instant speed uh, supreme verdict and uh, shout out to Zwanila for subscribing right there and then uh, something really weird happens it's going to happen like in a minute but I'll just commentate it right now because it's going to take a while to mention but they they assemble the Teferi knowledge pool combo right Teferi Mage Zalfir knowledge pool combo and I don't know how this worked, but first of all, they got super lucky because they were able to um, imprint one of my Rowls off the top three cards of my library. They were able to get a Rowl to kill our Jace. Now, the Jace was our key to victory because Jace was going to bounce her to Fairy and let us win the game. But they were able to get the Rowl and kill our Jace just barely with enough pings to kill our Jace and win the game. We were so dang close. And here's where Moto glitches out and doesn't let me choose new targets for my Electrolyze, which also was a huge tempo swing that probably cost us the game. And I don't know how this happened, but they were able to cast enough spells. I don't know how it worked, um, but like they were able to just keep chaining spells. I don't know where it came from. I got super confused at the end of this game. Um, but the opponent ended up getting there. See, as you can see, we had Geist of St. Traff. We were about to win. And the Electro Electrolyze also cost us the game there as well. Um, but congrats to our opponent with the uh, Teferi Knowledge Pool combo. So, yeah, GG's and uh, Kano Yagoro. 
uh, ended up coming to the chat, so that's pretty cool. So I'll see you in the next game. All right, so we got a game here against Ogro Eagers. Ogro Eagers. Uh, they're on Mono Green Stompy. Um, so let's go Scalding Tarn, and we're just going to pass an Ops. So let's hope that there's no Shaber Sanctuary. Experiment 1. So at least game 1 should be a decent matchup, depending. Alright, let's go fetch and shock. I think I want to get a hollowed fountain here. Because I want, I want blue. And let's pass the pelt collector. Gonna try to just stem the bleeding here. Ooh, Electrolyze is pretty neat. Uh, just in case they have like Aspect of Hydra or something, I'm just going to Helix their Experiment 1 now. Or you know what, I could do it to their Dryad Militant. But their Experiment 1 can, can regen. Yeah, I'll do it to their Experiment 1. Because Electrolyze can kill the Dryad Militant. So we're going to need a Planeswalker to grind out with. Not a fan of both Pell Collector and Experiment 1 together, at least not full set of both. This deck probably wants a Vendillion Click. I think that, that'd be something cool for this deck. Land. Thank you. Alright, so just in case of protection spells, let's electrolyze the Avatar now. Draw a card, try to hit our land drop, and try to find a Rowl or some kind of other Planeswalker. Unfortunately, that Dry and Milton is exiling all our spells, so Snapcaster doesn't have much to flash back. But I will try to ambush Piker to block the Dry and Militant uh, next turn, and that'll give us our other Snapcaster values back. Steel Leaf is pretty good, so we're going to have to find another path to exile for that. Yep, gets in for five. It's pretty beefy. Mutagenic Growth. Well, that can help us block the Steel Leaf. So let's opt here. Try to find a path or something. Storm Chaser Mage. That's pretty good. Alright, I'll put it on top. And let's go Sacred Foundry tapped. So we're planning on trading with the Steel Leaf here. We're going to pay two life, so we're going to go to five after this turn. It's going to be pretty terrifying. So if they have Aspect of Hydra, we actually die. But that's the risk we are willing to take to get back in this game. It's everything or nothing at this point. Block Steel Leaf. A Lightning Helix would also be a decent top deck. Alright, let's play... The Storm Chaser Mage. Aaron Mesa, pass and leave up opt. And with this opt, that allows us to effectively block. They got an avatar. It's pretty good. So I can go off Fuzz Boros Charm and effectively block this guy. It's pretty good. So Prowess works. Steam vents to the bottom. 
we draw planes, unfortunately, because I kind of wanted to fetch that planes, but it's all right. We can just get a mountain and we can Boros Charm to deal four damage to their face and effectively block the Colonian Tusker. Hopefully they don't have a removal or a pump spell and they don't. All right, come on, something good. A land is not good. That's what we wanted to avoid. But we can block the Dryad Militant and go to one. Let's hope for no Rancors, no Galtas. Yo, I has a deck. I think that um, Pell Collector and Experiment 1 are essential to Monogreen Stompy. Those are like the main one drops. Alright, we go to one, so we're still alive. Opponent does not have any follow-up, which is great. Okay, Helix is a great top deck. Let's see if this works. Helix the Avatar. I doubt they have Vines of Asswood or Blossoming Defense because they would have casted it to kill us. Ooh, they were playing safe. They could have killed us. Alright, I don't know why I didn't attack because I think I'm going to take this hit. Yeah, I'm not going to block. Go to one again. Because I want to block. I want this guy to block just in case we top a spell. Snapcaster is good. So I'm going to try to do this main phase for that same scenario, just in case, because um, I don't want them to be playing defensively and such. So Helix on there, dude. See if they have another protection spell. And they do have another protection spell. I don't know why they're not just using them. They could have doubled up on it. All right. No attacks again. We're being safe. I cannot just block with snap alone. I have to double block because this thing does have trample. So let's double block. See if they top the pump spell to get through all of it. Because they're in top deck mode. And they do trade with the storm chaser mage. Just don't be a Steel Leaf. Oh, it's exactly a Steel Leaf. That's what I didn't want to see. So we need a Jace or a Path here. Or an Opt. Swift Spear does not do it. And they got there. Relentless top decks from our opponent. Onto the sideboard. Uh, if they do have the Shaper Sanctuary, that would be obnoxious. But I, I don't think I'm going to bring in Wear and Tear for it. I'm just going to bring in Settle the Wreckage, and we will cut Mutagenic Growth because it is a little bit painful here. And just run it back like that. We got this. We can do this. This is going to be a really back and forth matchup. Or it's mostly just going to be us trying to stay alive and then stabilizing. Yo, what's up, Thor251? And yes, we will be on the play. And this is a good hand. Let's keep that. Storm Chaser into Bolt Path Path. I'm in. See me at one. He has that one life for a while. Forest starts on Dryad Militant. That's going to start exiling our spells. I think this is a game where I'm actually going to try to race them, though. With Double Storm Chaser plus Path. Alright, I think I'll fetch a Sacred Foundry off of the Flooded Strand. We are getting a little bit low here. But I think it's worth it. I'm 
I'm not going to risk blocking and trading off my guy. I want to keep my guy. They have an avatar of the resolute. That has reach, so we got to be wary of that. Ooh, another storm chaser mage. So I think I have to fetch and shock another sacred foundry here. Do I? Or could I fetch a mountain? I think I'm just going to preserve my life total and fetch a mountain. It won't allow us to cast double path, but I think it's worth it. Let's play another storm chaser mage and let's actually bolt their avatar. Opponent did not have Shaper Sanctuary, fortunately. Now we can get in for four. Opponent's down 15, but they're still in the lead. So we've been fetching and shocking. Got another avatar. That I'm going to have to path. Sure, we'll take the two. All right, so we got another land anyways. So let's follow up with another Storm Chaser Mage. And let's actually just attack with everything. And if they want to block, I will path the Dryad Militant and just eat their dude. They're taking it. Okay. Well, I guess I will path their avatar. Get triple prowess. Get them to nine. So that if we top deck any spell, we'll have lethal. And I'd like to be in that position. A dismember would be quite painful for them, so that's fine. I gave them their third land, so they can play a Steel Leaf Champion if they have it. And can get in range of, like, Aspect of Hydra. Play a bunch of Devotion. But we'll have a path held up at all times. So any spell off the top will get us the game here. Any spell. Alright, let's fetch a Sacred Foundry here. And come on, top deck. Snapcaster, anything. Steam Vents, that is not it, but we do have another path followed by Lethal. So they're going to have to get like the, the God Draw aspect of Hydra here, like a lot of Devotion plus aspect of Hydra to be able to get Lethal. If they just go another land plus like Pell Collector, Steel Leaf Champion, and then followed by Aspect of Hydra. That will be 5 Devotion, which means they will put us to 1, but that is not lethal. So we may have this one. They're going to need to remove our guys or have another Avatar of the Resolute for Reach. They did top deck the 5th land. They could go Steel Leaf plus Double Aspect, and that I think is their only out. Vines of Vastwood. Plus aspect, aspect? Plus aspect, and do they have another one? They do have vines plus double aspect, and that is the nut from our opponent. And they dumb us for exactly lethal. Mono Green Stompy getting there against our Jeskai burn deck, and to add insult to injury, they do another aspect just to show that they had three of them in hand. And uh, there we go. That'll do it. And Jeskai Burn did not do the greatest. I think what it lacked is aggression. Swift Spear, I think, was not enough as a one-drop. Maybe I, th I think this deck might actually want Gitu Lava Runner uh, and Vendillion Click. Just We need more attackers because we can't just rely straight up on Burn. Because since we're more of a mid-rangey Burn deck, like mid-rangey quote-unquote, um, a lot of our burn has to go at our opponent's creatures for us to stabilize because we're not as quick as like the traditional Boros burn. So a lot of our burn has to go to our opponent's stuff, leaving us with not enough resources to actually kill our opponent. So that leaves us in a position where we're heavily relying on Ral, but we got 20 lands only, so sometimes we didn't find the lands to get to Ral. And so that's the problem. So I think if you're going to play this deck, I think it'd just be worlds better if you added a little bit more creatures. Spell Queller, maybe main board Geist of St. Draft, maybe Vendillion Click, maybe Gate 2 Lava Runner, maybe um, Restoration Angel. Uh, this feels like the old Jeskai Flash decks. I think that you don't really need to go Mutagenic Growth plus Boros Charm in a Jeskai deck, like a Jeskai Burn deck, because... Uh, 
back in the day, we used to have Jeskai Flash, which was enough of an aggressive deck with, like, Bolt and Helix is enough burn spells, I think. And Bolt, Helix, and Electrolyze with Ral to copy those, I think is plenty. I, I think that getting the Boros Charm and the Mutagen Growth is just too cute. And then those could be replaced with more creatures. That gives you five slots to put, like, Vendillion Clank, Geist of Saint Trap, Spell Queller, something. So that's the problem with this deck, but... It was uh, it looked fun on paper, and it was a lot of fun to play. So thank you, Loic David, for your deck submission. Um, and I did think two planes was too much, so I did put one. Um, but yeah, I think the deck could use a little bit of work here and there around those rough edges. So uh, that advice I just gave, maybe you might want to experiment around with that. Or maybe I just played the deck completely wrong. I don't know. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments down below what you do with this deck. Additionally, let me know a deck you would like to see for a future episode of Fan Fridays. And uh, you can leave it in the comments or DM me on social media or email it to me wherever I can see your comment. And you might just see your deck played on a future episode of Fan Fridays. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Go check out the social media links are down below. Thank you to all my patrons. And keep in mind, if you wanted to pick up today's deck or some variation of it, you can get the deck and from tcgplayer.com by clicking the decklist link down below. That is our affiliate link. Support them. They support me. And uh, we're going to get on out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.